series. My name is Carmen Lampson with the WebEx Developer Evangelism Team. For today's webinar, we will be using the Slido Embedded app for Q&A. Look for it to pop up on the right side of your screen. You can also participate on your mobile device by scanning that QR code. Joining us for today's webinar are Tanuj Goyal and Stefan Zeidenberg with the WebEx Connect team, giving us an introduction to the platform developer tools, and building blocks you can use to integrate communications capabilities into your apps. But before we jump into all that fun, Phil will share some exciting things to look out for. Take it away, Phil. Okay. Hi, everybody. Thanks a lot for joining uh, this session. I just want to quickly highlight some of the latest news for WebEx developers before we start our main presentation. Uh, the majority of these things you can find uh, and read more about on developer.webex.com slash blogs. So uh, first, uh, we just released our new uh, WebEx web calling SDK. Uh, that's a toolkit for developers who are looking to integrate the WebEx calling features into web applications. So it leverages our JavaScript SDK, WebRTC, uh, and that powers bespoke web apps or even really complex enterprise solutions. Uh, you can read all about the uh, highlights on the key SDK features, benefits, uh, potential integration use cases uh, right on the blogs page. Uh, but next, uh, the leader of the WebEx Developer Relations team, Luz Delgado, authored a really helpful white paper showing us how to optimize an incident management with custom-built command bots uh, in WebEx messaging. So uh, there's a lot of great info there on the benefits of automation, the power of customization, and a variety of ways that we can integrate with the WebEx platform. So be sure to check that one out. Uh, third... Uh, we've re revamped two of our developer guides uh, for WebEx for Wholesale APIs uh, and WebEx for Broadworks APIs. Um, and so this brings together the most current and comprehensive information for these product platforms. Uh, you can find these new guides right in the documentation section on the dev portal. Uh, and fourth, we have a really nice post-event roundup by Cole McNellis uh, on the activities of our WebEx App Hub integration partners at Cisco Live in Amsterdam that just happened at the beginning of the month. Uh, it, this is a particular focus on the power of AI. So it's a great way to learn about what our partners are building. So I encourage everybody to go check that one out. Uh, and next, we uh, recently published uh, some new how-to blogs, and that shows us how to work with three different uh, application types in WebEx. Uh, so the first one, uh, the leader of uh, WebEx developer evangelism, Adam Weeks, he takes us through a step-by-step -step lab to create an RSS uh, feed reader. Uh, and that's inside WebEx Contact Center um, in the agent desktop, uh, what's called a header widget. So he kind of takes us through the entirety of, of building it and deploying it inside of like a self-contained lab. Uh, very, very cool. Uh, and the second one, uh, the WebEx developer evangelist, Joe Zanini, uh, authored a guide to create and manage WebEx service apps. Uh, and that's for streamlining uh, the authorization of org level integrations for administrators. Uh, and it also enables uh, efficient token consumption for high scale API calls. Um, so I know we've been getting a lot of questions around new service apps. Uh, and with this one, they should answer pretty much all the questions for getting started. Um, and third, uh, WebEx engineer Kasava Krishnan Madhavan, uh, he shows us how we can streamline the development process uh, in the WebEx calling SDK uh, with Yarn workspaces. Uh, he also explained how these Yarn workspace strategies can be applied to various other WebEx uh, integration types. Um, so that's a really cool blog too. Um, but really, that, yeah, that's it for the uh, WebEx developer news for this month. Um, we also have a, a newsletter that actually puts all these together too. So um, you know, you should be receiving that if you sign in the, for the developer portal. Uh, if you uh, are not getting those newsletters, uh, please let us know and we'll get you added to the list. Uh, but with that, uh, that's it for the news this month. So let's get started with the uh, main presentation. So Tanuj, take it away. Thank you, Phil. Uh, hi, everyone. Welcome to the WebEx Connect Masterclass webinar. My name is Tanuj. I am the product management leader for WebEx Connect, which is our enterprise cloud communications platform. In today's session, uh, I will be giving you an introduction to WebEx Connect and its capabilities before handing over to my colleague, Stefan who will walk you through a live demo of how you can use WebEx Connect for automating your customer interactions. So with that, let's dive in. Uh, to start with, the, you know, I quickly wanted to touch upon, you know, what is CPaaS because 
some of you may not necessarily be familiar with this terminology. So to keep things simple, cloud communications platform as a service or CPaaS is a cloud-based platform uh, that offers you developers as well as business users uh, the ability to embed customer communication capabilities into your existing apps and business processes. Uh, what you see below is a little more expansive uh, view of what you know uh, entails a comprehensive enterprise cloud communications platform, right? From APIs for being able to do uh, you know communications with your customers to a business capability layer which allows you to handle all the orchestration and automation of interactive customer journeys uh, uh, you know then we touch upon some of the other capabilities like nlp and ai so with that high level introduction uh, let me you know quickly jump on to why do we as developers need cpas platform so at the crux of it really is the evolving customer experience expectations. You know, as we all know, uh, nowadays consumers, including ourselves, want to do things digitally. Everything is getting, everything is going digital. We as consumers want to do more and more self-service. So, you know, instead of walking into a store, we want to place our orders online and, you know, just go and pick up, pick it up from the store or simply get it delivered to our home steps. Uh, doctor appointments are moving from, you know, in-person physical appointments to virtual appointments wherever possible, uh, you know, more and more banking related things are becoming digital uh, and, you know, small things to big things. Everything is essentially going digital. And in this world, consumers, you know, want the ability to do things on their own. They expect to be informed about what to expect from the brands they really love and engage with. And they want to do so on the channels that they're using today to interact and engage with their friends and families. What this means, uh, what, what this has led to is enterprises wanting and uh, realizing that there is a need for uh, doing CX transformation for meeting all these customer expectations, uh, which essentially has led to increased demand on enterprise IT to be able to support the CX transformation initiative across various lines of business, any large end within any large enterprise. Uh, but what is also happening is many such uh, initiatives that are being uh, you know initiated are taking too long to complete uh, you know oftentimes uh, reports suggest they take too much time to realize value uh, and and the question comes you know why is that so uh, so at the heart of it really you know is uh, the if the challenges which are related to you know how do you support such seamless customer experiences without replacing your existing technology stack that you have built over years right uh, or you know how do you overcome some of the challenges that you have in terms of being able to leverage data that sits across various siloed systems in the context of a customer interaction to make it contextual and seamless for your end customers and that is you know clearly not a simple challenge more so you know when we uh, look at today's world of various channels so to put things into perspective, you know, we'll quickly look at one CPaaS use case. The example that we see here is from banking industry. There's a proactive notification being sent out to the customer about an upcoming credit card payment. Uh, the customer is being given an option to say, you know, whether the customer would like to defer the payment. The customer is able to seamlessly respond to the message that she or he has received. Uh, you know, and then defer the payment by a week by which they are expecting to get some extra funds in their account. And on top of that, they are being given the ability to schedule a conversation with a financial advisor to, you know, get into a conversation about how to better manage fin the finances overall. So this is a simple example, uh, you know, of the kind of things uh, customers expect today, you know, being informed proactively about uh, things that are going to happen, uh, you know, in the sense of all the service and products that they're using, and then also having the ability to be able to make changes, et cetera, seamlessly without having to, you know, uh, as an example, call somebody or, you know, walk into a bank branch to be able to do simple things like that. Now, why, why is this, you know, a challenging problem and how CPAS platforms make it easy to handle it, right? So if you look at any large, big enterprise, the technology stack that enterprises uh, have today has been built over decades. And many of the systems that any large enterprise used, uh, they were, you know, designed in a PC web era, and they were not designed to be able to facilitate customer interactions over the channels that we use nowadays, right? From SMS to things like, you know, um, RCS or uh, Apple messages for business or WhatsApp and all the other new channels that we as consumers are using increasingly. So how do you go about, you know, uh, delivering these seamless experiences on all those channels 
without ripping or replacing your existing technologies system. Now, a lot of, uh, you know, developers or enterprises, what, what they end up doing for solving such challenges is, uh, you know, uh, get developers involved, you know, get various APIs for various channels, uh, get get into long and complex application development projects to essentially automate various journeys, right? So as you see in this screen, uh, you know, in, in any large organization, there are multiple such journeys to be automated. So what you are essentially looking at is uh, the need for being able to uh, do multiple such application development projects for each of the journeys. So in a banking context, you know, on one hand, you have credit card business and all the journeys that you may have in the credit card uh, context, uh, you know, then you may have savings or retail banking arms, you, you may have, you know, mortgage and all such divisions. And imagine, you know, various IT teams uh, solving the same challenge by integrating these APIs into existing business systems in their own silos. What this essentially leads to over time is various siloed applications, many of which are in part solving the same challenge by doing redundant development and you know, creating this whole uh, mesh of various applications, which are not only complex to build, but they are increasingly complex to maintain over time. Right. So again, just to reiterate this point, you, you know, as a large business will have multiple core business systems. It may be your CRM systems. If you're a bank, it may be your fraud banking system. It may be your, uh, you know, retail banking system. Uh, just trying to integrate each of those business systems with each of those, uh, you know, each of the channels that you want to support for customer interaction and then doing application development in between, uh, you know, writing layers of code to be able to handle all of this uh, is not uh, you know, the right approach for CX transformation because one, it is complex and effort heavy. And secondly, it is very, very difficult to maintain over time. So how does the CPaaS platform like WebEx Connect help solve this problem? So the, uh, you know, WebEx Connect like CPaaS platforms, uh, they sit at the center of, you know, all the existing enterprise business systems that any large ent enterprise has, as well as all the consumer touch points where we are looking at delivering seamless customer experiences and it provides out of box ability to facilitate bi-directional customer interactions on all these channels that consumers prefer to have conversations on in today's world and then also the ability to uh, you know leverage out of box integrations to a large number of third party applications as well as the ability to seamlessly configure reusable integrations with your existing proprietary enterprise systems and then reuse them across various customer journeys. What we mean by that will become a little more clear as we uh, go from here on. But essentially, you know, this platform really takes the complexity out by providing many of the capabilities that you would have to otherwise build your own development capacity uh, in building applications to solve these challenges, right? One of the examples would be all these communication channels, they are constantly evolving. There are new things that are happening. Uh, you know, the API payloads are changing over time, how the, you know, various webhook payloads, come, all that is changing. So you as a business want to really or you as a developer really want to focus on delivering seamless customer experience rather than having to constantly deal with changing APIs and then also on top of that trying to do it in various application silos. So instead of that, you get a centralized cloud communications platform that helps you manage, build and manage such interactive customer journeys across various systems. Now, WebEx Connect is an enterprise CPaaS platform. What that means is not only do we provide the functional capabilities that you need in the context of automating a customer interaction, but we also provide a large number of relevant enterprise controls uh, and the right kind of uh, you know, service assurance so that you as an enterprise can confidently run your mission critical customer interactions on a platform like this. Uh, to to make things you know understandable and simple, take any simple you know example of let's say you want to automate uh, the you know. Uh, journey of receiving order notifications or parcel delivery notifications on a channel like WhatsApp and you know provide seamless options to customers to reschedule those deliveries if there is a need. What you would need is first of all the ability to integrate uh, you know with your existing business systems where such parcel delivery related events get fired. Uh, you know, on top of that, you will need the ability to handle, you know, bi-directional communications over the channel like WhatsApp. So that's where communication channel management uh, module comes in. Now, you know, when you want to automate such experiences, you need the ability to interpret, you know, what the customer is trying to convey when you receive an incoming message from the customer. So for that, you know, the NLP, natural language processing, understanding and chatbot kind of capabilities come in to be able to automatically identify the intent 
and handle the conversation automatically. And on top of that, you need to be able to handle all the business logic that goes on in terms of delivering such seamless conversations. Uh, and then on top of that, there are enterprise intelligent controls. I'll touch upon it uh, as, as we proceed further. So starting, you know, going a bit deeper into each of those areas, uh, you know, how developers can leverage WebEx Connect for being able to uh, deliver seamless customer experiences. Uh, you can use our communication APIs and SDKs. We offer a set of uh, a rich set of APIs and webhooks for being able to both send as well as receive customer communications over 13 plus channels. You know, spanning from uh, uh, things like SMS, voice, and email to all the advanced new age channels like Apple Messages for Business or WhatsApp. This apart, we also offer an Android and iOS and JavaScript SDKs for being able to send push notifications and facilitate two-way customer conversations over mobile apps as well as over websites using live chat as a channel. Uh, this apart, we offer a very robust uh, integrations module. We offer out-of-box integration with a number of, uh, you know, third-party systems like Salesforce, Zendesk, uh, you know, vertical systems like Epic uh, in the healthcare domain, uh, as well as the ability to configure reusable integration using REST or SOAP-based APIs or, you know, integrating with your data-related systems with capabilities such as uh, file-based integrations or data streams, which allow you to stream a copy of, uh, you know, all the customer conversations that you're having with your customers using uh, technologies like Kafka. On top of that, we provide a very comprehensive tool set that both developers and business users need in an organization to be able to handle customer interactions in an automated fashion. Examples include, uh, you know, modules like template management, which allow people who are responsible for content to configure, uh, you know, rich and interactive uh, customer interaction messages and templates. Uh, you know, what you see, what you get kind of an interface. On top of that, you know, we offer something that we refer to as a visual flow builder, which is essentially a low code visual flow builder to accelerate your CX transformation initiatives, uh, you know, by giving a rich set of uh, existing capabilities that you can simply drag and drop on a canvas, uh, you know, do various uh, configurations and uh, using a one click kind of an approach uh, launch those applications in a highly secure and scalable cloud environment, which, you know, automatically scales to support uh, increasing volumes of customer interactions as you go. Uh, the application development, uh, you know, capability uh, is really very, very rich. It offers you everything that you need from a full lifecycle perspective of application development. You have, uh, you know, inbuilt compilation capabilities when you configure a flow and you try to publish it, it compiles and tells you if there are any errors. Uh, you know, there are things like version control, debugging, and troubleshooting, and then very rich reporting, you know, flow analytics. Uh, we refer to it as flow analytics that allows you to understand how your, you know, journeys are performing, you know, at what steps customers are dropping off or finding it difficult to, you know, have interactions with you. And you can constantly uh, optimize those journeys. Uh, Stefan would be covering more of it as we go further in the webinar. We already touched upon the, uh, you know, NLP, NLU capabilities, which are also available as part of the platform. We also offer uh, a very rich bot builder uh, module, which allows you to configure both FAQ as well as, uh, you know, Q&A and task related bots, which can automate various operations uh, while using natural language to make it easy for your customers. Uh, we also have various atomic capabilities, which you may want to use selectively in the, you know, context of various use cases. Simple example would be, let's say a customer comes, you know, and starts having interaction with you on a channel like Apple Business Chat and says, can you book an appointment for next Friday, you know, converting that next Friday into a specific date to be able to do a lookup in a CRM system to find out what slots are available on the day the customer is interested in scheduling a appointment on, right? Uh, we also, you know, have some generative AI-led capabilities such as text summarization. So let's say, a con you know, a conversation uh, starts, you send out a, con you know, reminder to a customer, the customer starts interacting with you and then there arises a need to escalate that conversation to a human agent so before you do that you can use text summarization node to create a summarized version of the interaction that happened between the customer and the bot so that the agent is able to understand the context quickly uh, finally uh, you know we also apart from these functional capabilities which are very very critical to be able to uh, do end-to-end -end customer journey interaction we offer a lot of relevant enterprise control uh, because so going back to the you know point where we were saying you have multiple businesses within any large enterprise and all those uh, you know teams have the need to do this such customer journey orchestration and automation which today is happening uh, you know in silos uh, in functional silos so we are essentially providing a centralized platform for everybody to be able to 
do such application development collaboratively on a single platform. So in that context, we offer very rich capabilities in terms of enterprise controls. So things like, let's say, you know, imagine there's a team that works on credit card related journeys and there's a team that works on uh, retail banking related, uh, you know, journeys. You have the ability to provide dedicated workspaces to them. You have things like, you know, locking your existing use case or service workspace so that, uh, you know, another developer who is co-developing on the same platform doesn't accidentally make changes to something that you have configured and, uh, you know, end up disrupting your life services, uh, you know, or the ability to selectively give access to look at sensitive customer data on the platform even though multiple people are uh, you know using the platform to automate such journey so that you are able to uh, ensure compliance with you know various regulations such as gdpr or hipaa etc so uh, you know to summarize it the webex connect platform provides you all the key capabilities that you need for automating customer interactions with a lot of relevant uh, enterprise controls that any you know enterprise IT department and large enterprise would need for being able to collaboratively do such customer journey automation across channels. Uh, you know, very quickly touching upon the uh, you know at one of the key capabilities that we offer really in the platform is this drag and drop builder. As you can see, there are various you know nodes available for various channels. Uh, you know, so that uh, you don't really have to as a developer start your journey from going through. Uh, detailed API documentation for each of these channels. You you know have a lot of capability available in you. What you see, what you get, kind of a mode, so that you can really focus on uh, you know optimizing customer interactions without having to deal with you know changing the underlying complexities of these messaging ecosystems. So it's a drag and drop environment. You know you can drag and drop uh, the nodes in the logical order. Do a little bit of a configuration. Click on a make live button, and your journey is live. And you can start testing it and then iterating it with your teams. With that. I'll hand over to my colleague Stefan to give us a live walkthrough of some of these capabilities. Great. Thanks, Tanoush. And I'm going to share my screen here. And there's there's two things I want to show you guys. One is I want to walk you through the platform just a little bit to highlight some of the enterprise controls that Tanoush referenced. And then we'll get into the meat of the conversation here, or the demo rather, which is um, me literally building a workflow from scratch and <laughs> hoping it works uh, for, for you guys to understand the efficiencies that we're, that we're talking about. So um, as my screen loads, I believe you can see it now. It is a, so th this is a container of services that we refer to. And what I've done is just in a demo environment, of course, I've created a few services that are representative of some of our large verticals, right? That, that, that we sell into quite a bit and that utilize our platform. Um, in these, you can come in and you'll get a glance of traffic. Um, you'll obviously have access to your workflows and the rules that you have associated with those workflows and event APIs, and then your uh, um, API credentials themselves, whether they're JWT tokens or service keys that you're leveraging. Um, these, this all becomes important, whether you're leveraging us for the workflow automation and the orchestration canvas that Tanuj highlighted, that is gonna represent 95% of the demo today, but there is also the, um, the, the conversational APIs, as, as we refer to them, as that allow you to just simply send and receive messages on any given um, channel that we support. All right. So, so these are the more traditional base layer APIs that you might be familiar with when the term CPaaS is floated out there. Um, Beyond the services themselves, there's obviously groups and teams hierarchy. I'm in a demo team right now. Um, but to Tanuja's point, if you had an HR organization and a marketing organization and a development organization all within the same company, they would all roll up to the same tenant um, of WebEx Connect. And then within those groups and or teams, you'd be able to um, assign different roles and uh, capabilities for your teammates as they're referred to as. I just invited my personal Gmail account in here. And then you can see the different types of roles that you'd have access to. And then a roles guide here to help you understand how uh, roles-based access controls would be governed. Um, from an asset management standpoint, um, you have the ability to come in here and manage integrations. So this is where you can build custom integrations into the solution. So if you have a proprietary system or a CRM uh, vendor that you leverage quite extensively across uh, use cases, this is where you would come in and build um, a integration with that, with that system or systems. So uh, you can quickly access it 
in your canvas. And this will make more sense once I pull up the actual orchestration workflow in a minute. Um, on the app side, I have some um, richer channels with the exception of email that I've included in here where you can come in and you can literally configure your own um, uh, rich messaging channel, whatever it might be, uh, in order to facilitate communications and meet your customers where they want to be met uh, at their moments of need. Um, and then, of course, you have the ability to manage your, your phone numbers as well. These can be short codes. They can be what were formerly known as long codes. And now, because they're all being regulated, at least in the United States, is starting to be the case in Canada. Um, they're referred to as 10 DLCs, so 10 digit long codes. It's just a different naming convention that the carriers use. Um, and then of course, these can be 1-800 numbers as well, or TFNs, toll free numbers, however, you're, however you wanna uh, term those. Um, you'll notice here that we have SMS, MMS, and then the little phone number for voice or the phone handle for voice, um, indicating that those are all capabilities that are associated with this number specifically. Uh, and again, that's all going to be subject to how you decide to deploy the platform and, and use it. Um, so with that, um, the documentations page, this will become relevant towards the end of the presentation where we're, we'll advertise our sandbox environment that's free to use as well. But this is where a lot of the information about the platform itself is available from a full feature kind of uh, scenario where you're leveraging the flow builder and all the bells and whistles or uh, more specifically to where I am in the, in, in the um, documentations page now, this is where the API reference lives. So if you're just using this from a true kind of um, um, base layer communication API standpoint, and you're building intelligence and integration logic on your side, um, this is where you would come to benefit from our APIs. The send message V2 is probably our most predominantly used one. Um, and in fact, just to, kick us off here, um, I'm, I'm going to leverage that API. I'm using Postman, as I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, to generate a voice call. I have my handy uh, phone over here. I'm working off of one screen, so apologies. I'm going to send myself a phone, a phone call. I'm going to edit this I'm just, to make it long enough to where I can, I have time to hit the uh, speakerphone button on my phone. So this is a very long message for the uh, webinar today. Thank you. Enjoy the show. Okay, so I'm gonna send this through and we'll hopefully pick up in time. Maybe I didn't pray enough to the demo gods. Um, oh, I have do not disturb on. Hold on one second. Turn that off. Let's try that again. There we go. Enjoy the show. And. I was not ready for that. So let me do it one more time just so you can understand what it said. Uh, test three. Send this through. I'll receive the call, add the volume up now, and you'll see, hopefully, I'll come through again. Our today, thank you. Enjoy the show, test three. Okay, so generally, let me get the screen up here for WebEx. And there we go. So now let me translate, let me um, navigate over to uh, the PowerPoint presentation. And this is really going to kick off uh, the workflow that we're going to be supporting for. Um, the demo here. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through the, the build out from scratch of a integration where there's an external system, let's call it a CRM, point of sale, doesn't matter, that's going to trigger a uh, workflow and connect. And then the workflow and connect is going to be responsible for 
uh, generating an integration uh, or, or uh, uh, benefiting from an integration to interrogate a database and understand uh, information, metadata in this case, on a location for an end user, where we're then gonna determine time zone uh, for this end user. And then we're going to uh, make sure that that time zone is uh, within the social hours, the acceptable time frame to send uh, somebody a message. This is predominantly used in marketing scenarios or proactive communications, where you don't wanna send somebody a message in the middle of the night, for example. Any additional logic and decisioning that needs to be done uh, with, with that message, uh, determining channel, making sure this person is opted in to receive messages in the first place. Um, and then we're actually gonna send the person a message, myself in this case, um, and we're going to um, open up a um, response opportunity. So the, effectively creating a two-way conversation in a structured workflow uh, that you'll see here in WebEx Connect, um, allowing the person to respond. In this case, we're just gonna integrate with a third-party API that I use. It's a, it's a stock API that allows you to check the uh, current price on a given uh, uh, stock ticker symbol. Um, and then we're going to reopen that conversation back to the end user, uh, allowing him or her to uh, respond again. So very simple use case, very, very um, high level to a degree. We're going to focus on the happy path, but I do want to also take time to go through where the error pathing can be included into these uh, workflows. As we all know, that's incredibly important in real life production scenarios. So um, Navigating back over to uh, WebEx Connect now, I'm going to focus on the, so I'm going back to the services. I'm going to start from scratch. I'm going to create our own service for this. I'm going to call it uh, webinar uh, demo. And again, I got my service keys here. If I need them, I'm not going to use them for the, the sake of this uh, demonstration, but I am going to navigate over to workflows. And then once I'm in workflows, I'm going to click on create. I'm going to call this uh, demo one. We'll go ahead and start from scratch. If you had any template, um, any desire to use the templates as a, as a kind of shortcut to get started, by all means, these are um, available here as well. And the first thing the, the system asks for is a webhook or a initiation. How is this workflow going to be triggered? We're going to start with webhooks, but this could be a custom event stemming from a file that gets dropped. Um, it could be a series of integrations that are uh, predefined in accordance with your, um, your tenant, how it's being leveraged, if it's in concert with Contact Center, for example, or if it's a standalone application of the tool, or if you're actually leveraging um, end users, uh, a call to action somewhere where you're asking them to scan a QR code, send in a text message, uh, or whatever have, uh, whatever they might be doing to initiate a conversation with your brand or your workflow in this case. Just to keep things uh, on the more technical side, we're gonna go ahead and assume that this is gonna be triggered um, via a, a uh, external system. So we're gonna go ahead here and select webhook as we just did. I'm gonna create a new event, I'm gonna call it, um, webinar demo one, just to match my service name. And then this is where the efficiency really starts pouring in. Um, the sample input allows you to suggest what that JSON or XML might be that is gonna be ingested into the workflow to then start having the workflow do something for you. In this case, um, I'm just gonna use a customer ID uh, parameter. When I click on parse here, you'll now see that customer ID presents, it presents itself as an output variable. So you'll see I have my standard metadata that, that comes with the just kind of standard uh, variables and parameters that come with the platform. And then I'm gonna use uh, customer ID as one here as well to integrate with an external database. I'm gonna be using uh, Google Sheets here. So this is just Google Sheets. Um, these are my two records that I have in this hypothetical database. And uh, when I connect these two, this then allows me to perform a get against my um, endpoint here. Let me pull up my 
handy sheet. There we go. And then what's really cool about this is that it allows me to test over here. And you'll see that it gives me the full response of the values um, associated with the database. So again, if I were to come over here and change this to, uh, we'll just add a bunch of E's there. Um, you'll, and I hit test again, Let me get rid of the documentation. When I click test here, you'll see that it's updated dynamically in real time. Now, what I can do is I can copy this. If I don't have access to uh, postman for whatever reason or something like that, and I can import my sample output um, or response that I'm going to parse against in here and the system will parse for me. So it's going to give me a bunch of values that I got back. Obviously, Google Sheets doesn't do a good job of uh, leveraging the, the headers field to give these friendly names. So I'm just going to, by memory, I suppose, say this is my customer ID, my first name, my last name, my location, my phone number, and my channel of preference, my fallback channel, and my status, right? Especially when we start talking about SMS, we're going to keep this WhatsApp focused just because it's easier to demo. Um, and it's a richer channel. Uh, but if this were SMS, for example, you would definitely want to be able to check against whether this person is opted in to receive messages or not. Um, so go ahead and import. Bear with me as I go through here. So we'll call this one customer ID. And these can be completely friendly names. They don't really need to respect any sort of traditional uh, syntax or naming convention. So we'll go first, we'll do last. Uh, what was next? We'll do location, phone, and channel. So location, phone, channel, and we'll do fallback and status. So fallback and status. So this sets us up pretty well to now apply a ton of conditional logic as well as dynamic attribution into the bodies of messages or subsequent API calls that we're going to make. Um, so at this point, um, we want to hit the social hours check to make sure that this person is being messaged within um, a acceptable time, time frame, right? So we're going to leverage the location API to determine um, um, uh, time zone, right? So we're gonna go ahead and actually we're gonna use uh, this guy here. So there's one called location, what is the zip code? Here we go. Actually, hold on, I think there was a better one. Yeah, this gives us time zone here. So perfect. So we're going to go ahead and call this request. And we're going to leverage city, which is going to be the location here. Well, let's just go ahead and assume for a second that it's Boston. We'll go ahead and get the we'll test it. Ah, API key, of course. And for those of you wondering if you'll be able to use my API key, that is just going to get changed right after this call. So have at it um, until then. API Ninjas is great, by the way. Uh, highly recommend their third-party APIs if you need them for demos or whatever the case might be. Um, so here we go. Test. Uh, doesn't like that either. What am I doing wrong? Well, I guess we need a state.
and we'll do Massachusetts. Okay, that's what we want to get. <laughs> All right, well, this uh, was working. Let's see, Boston, right, that's spelled right, Boston, Mass. All right, well, we'll skip this step. So let's assume here that we can infer uh, time zone as a dynamic parameter. Um, and we'll just move on to the social hours check node here, which is now gonna go ahead and tell us, all right, what time of day is it acceptable to send this person a message? We'll go ahead and do it by day just to show you the full range of features here. Um, this allows you to go down um, day of the week, whatever the case might be. You can make these dynamic if you want. In fact, I was trying to get down to the path where we would make this dynamic, whoops, um, where we would have dynamic time zone, but we'll just go ahead and do um, America's New York, that's minus four. We'll do East Coast. And wherever that is, we'll just go ahead. We'll do we'll do Sao Paulo because I know that is within um, the time range right now, within the nine to six p.m. range. So it's going to let us through. What we could do here also is we could branch requests not in a social hour, but we could send them down a separate path. So for example, if it's not in social hours, we could send somebody an email instead, which is a less intrusive. Um, channel. And if it is within social hours, which is obviously going to be the case for this demo, at least, we'll go ahead and send them um, a WhatsApp communication. And we'll do this via the WhatsApp ID, which is going to be represented by the phone number in this case, right? If this was Apple, it would be a, a opaque ID. If it was Google, it'd be a Google ID, so on and so forth. And then in this message here, we're going to go ahead and say, um, what company company's stock would you like to look up? And then one of the cool things here that you can do also, and I'm going to be leveraging um, webhook.site, another third-party application, just to showcase um, how correlation IDs and notification URLs or callback URLs, depending on how you refer to these as, um, can be referenced. We'll go ahead and call this um, WhatsApp message one. And then you can add extra metadata in here if you wanted to like a, uh, like a timestamp, for example, um, that can all be applied there. Um, and then of course, we're gonna give the person the option to respond to this message. Um, these are common receive nodes, by the way. So it could be, um, you could be managing multiple channels all in a single workflow. So in this case, I'm gonna give myself 120 seconds to respond. This could be 28,000 or however many seconds are in a day um, or a week I think is the, is the limit. Um, and then you can have, then you can get into a design principles conversation where you could have a catch-all workflow that basically plays traffic cop and anybody who responds outside of a specific window hits that catch-all and then based on the conditional logic applied in that workflow, we'll then get um, farmed out to the appropriate subsequent workflow that, that you would want to manage that, that end user's request. Um, and then over here, we're gonna go ahead and use phone again. So phone, save. Oh, it's gonna be an incoming message. And then we're gonna mine that message and uh, provide a response. So in this case, again, we're going to make another API call um, to a third-party system. This is the, the stocks API that I was talking about originally. Uh, let's do stock market here, stock price. These guys. Copy this one in. The standard get will do the uh, API. This thing again. There we go. And then these these are examples of where you could actually be leveraging um, a, a custom node. 
I decided not to go that route for the demo because we would then spend the majority of the demo building the actual custom node, uh, which essentially is what you're looking at here, except with a variety of methods pre-populated against it that you would then just leverage dynamic parameters to populate it um, as needed, like the specific ticker symbol in this case. Um, let's go ahead and just do, uh, well, we're here with Cisco. Let's do Cisco. And if we test this, so we get a response. In this case, um, we're going to go ahead and put this in here. We're going to parse it. It's going to give us the values that we're looking for, along with the naming convention, which is helpful. And then you can determine which ones are relevant, which ones aren't, right? Um, so we're going to want, we'll just do all of them for now. But if, for example, the timestamp wasn't necessary, you could um, leave that off. I think that's everything we need. So import. Great, we'll, we'll just give them a um, ticker price, uh, company name. We'll call this one the exchange, and this will be timestamp. Great, save. So now I can leverage anything that was collected in here and uh, send that down a subsequent message to the end user sending him or her the uh, response that they're that they're looking for. So again, we go back through here and benefit from our parsed parameters. Um, the, whatever the, the following information was provided, and then you can start providing the information that you would like here. So you just say ticker is this, uh, price is this um, company full name is this. And then if you wanted um, to get real fancy, we'll, we'll go ahead and do the notification URL again, just so you can see how this gets all populated once I run it. We'll call this what's up message to um, do a timestamp there. Save. And now, and now we're essentially done. Um, I'll, I'll wrap it up because I know we want to leave time for questions and answers. But um, at this point, you could basically include in the body of your message whatever you want at the end of the day. But in here, you could say uh, reply, um, or I guess we could just do, do you want to? Um, again and then you would essentially I'm just cop copying and pasting nodes at this point let's go ahead down here I mean message everything's the same and then if the person replies yes or no you can just use a standard if else condition you could use what I was starting to say earlier is you could use the evaluate condition which is uh, allows you to inject JavaScript into the workflow itself. So if you wanted to take that those that that timestamp that was provided in seconds and turn that into something that a normal person would read, um, you could use JavaScript for that. You could also use it for this conditional logic, but a standard branch will suffice for now. We'll uh, go down the yes path, um, and this will be the person's uh, response. I think I need to select what I should. Here, yes, give that branch a name. The variable itself, there we go, will be the WhatsApp message. Um, and then we could just make it um, contains uh, yes. And then you can have your standard and or conditions as well. You could add another branch for no. In this case, it's a binary decision. So none of the above is the else condition. I'll just go ahead and say save. And then if they go down the yes path, we will basically um, loop them back to 
the beginning of the experience. If they say no or something else, we'll say, okay, goodbye. Um, okay, thank you. And then this will be uh, end message. All right, so now we have a bi-directional workflow that integrates with at least two or three different systems. And um, you can save it and then edit it if you'd like. You see that we get a bunch of errors and warnings. These are in the uh, yellow or amber color, meaning that you can still go live with this. There's nothing critical that's missing, but um, you may wanna check these out. And what it's referring to basically are these uh, yellow and red nodules that you see. This is where all the error pathing and timeout conditions can be applied. Obviously, in a production workflow, those would exist, and you would you would want to include those. But um, as I make this live, you can add version. So version one stock. Nice. Everything is version controlled as well. Um, and once you're in a go live status. You lose the ability to edit, but you can see here that it's publishing. If I had multiple versions in here, uh, you would see those, and then you can fall back or forward into whatever version makes sense. Um, while that's publishing, it only takes a like a minute or so. Um, you have your access to the channels here. Um, integrations is another one. This is where all the uh, pre-built integrations can come with your workflow or if you were to build custom integrations like we did with Google search, for example, uh, they would live here and you would have access to these freely within uh, your, your, your workflow as, as a person who's building and, and deploying these. All right, so let's see if this works. Um, let me go ahead and turn that back on. Great, so now, essentially, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy this, uh, this endpoint. I'm going to come over here. I already had this kind of pre-populated. I'm updating the endpoint. Customer ID is going to be 1234. Uh, customer ID, that's the same parameter there. So let's go ahead and hit send. Uh, there is it. In. Okay. What company stock would you like to look up? sure nvidia is on everybody's mind lately let's do nvidia and there it is oh i hard coded it to cisco that's why and what's really cool about this before we run out of time is you have live debugging so you have the ability to see everything that happened in accordance with that transaction um, as it's as it's happening so if i come in here and i and i couldn't figure out what it was um, I would be able to come in here and um, interrogate essentially all the different steps that the workflow went through. It's all encrypted, um, so you, you would need special access to be able to do that. But let's see here real quick. Um, that is something that a platform user would have the ability to view. So I'm going to make this the uh, first receive message. Here, save, make live again. So now we'll have two versions uh, fixed. All right, so now I'm going to go ahead and fire away. Let me just close this out now, and we'll send this again. Okay, what company stock? Let's try that again. NVIDIA. And voila, there we go. Uh, a little down compared to where they were at their all-time high yesterday. So with that, um, I conclude the live build. Um, thank you for your patience as I walk through that. Um, but as you can hopefully see that for an enterprise 
this might be a more efficient path forward than hand rolling code, um, depending on the scenario, of course. Um, before I uh, stop sharing my screen or, or give up the share, um, I do want to advertise our uh, sandbox. It's free to use. There's the link. I think it'll be shared in the space as well. And uh, please sign up, test it out. There's user guides in our documentation that'll help you get started. Uh, thank you. I hope you found this insightful. Awesome. Thank you, Stefan. And thank you, Tanuj. Okay, we've got a few minutes um, before our uh, session ends and we have some questions. Um, for those asking about the webinar recording, yes, this session is recorded and you can find this and all other previous webinar recordings at uh, developer.webex.com forward slash webinars. Uh, and we'll touch on some of your questions that you had today. Just a moment. Uh, so one of the questions that came up was, I would love it if you had evaluate nodes that supported more language, more languages other than JavaScript. And thank you for that feedback. That's actually really great feedback. Um, please do share what languages you are interested in, and we will pass that feedback over to our product team for evaluation. So if you want to just drop it in, um, I know it's not a question, but you can drop it in there and we'll share that feedback with the product team. Next question is, is there a WebEx contact center or WebEx rooms utilities for messaging channel? And we do integration with WebEx app can be done using custom integration nodes, HTTP node and WebEx connect event API and inbound webhooks. We'll answer all these questions in the space as well. Team, is there anything that stood out that you want to touch on? All right, let me call out one I saw. I have had issues with HTTP node utilizing post. Can you demo this with the body of the post populated with an attribute? Say the message and quote that attribute appropriately. So we can't do that in today's session uh, for the sake of time, but we would be happy to cover that in a future session. Um, but in the meantime, we recommend you post your issues on WebEx commu Connect Community Forum if you haven't done that already, and our experts will be able to help you out with that. That uh, link was also shared um, in the chat. It's a long one, so I won't read it out, but I'll share it again for any questions and additional questions. Uh, we have time for one more. Where can I find all the demos related to WebEx Connect flows, domain based like healthcare, et cetera? We found that it is in a D cloud, so I'll share that um, link as well in the space. And with that, we are at the top of the hour. So thank you for joining us today and be sure to pop over to the WebEx Developer Community Forum. Uh, where you can connect with the WebEx developers and the support team in case you run into any challenges while building or running your apps on WebEx. We love your feedback, so please do fill out the survey um, and let us know what you want to what you want to see next. And with that, thank you to the WebEx Connect team, thank you developer evangelism team, and thank you to our attendees. Have a great rest of your day and night.